You give me fever. Hi everyone, it's American. and welcome to the Mentalist Rewatch series, a show in which I rewatch and review every episode of The Mentalist from the beginning. Today's episode is Scarlet Fever, which is season one, episode 15, and after rewatching it, I'm going to share a few things that worked and didn't work for me. Let's start with what worked. Jane navigating the whole world of real housewives of Bitchyville was kind of fun to watch, especially because it's the kind of episode that had lighter moments because he was really interviewing not even characters, just stereotypes of characters. And that was fun to watch. Van Pelt stepping up was also kind of nice because you have to admit that her character often gets sidelined into running errands for her boss, so to speak. In her interaction with Jit, oh, oh, I was gonna call it Jisbin, Lisbon, <laughs> you kind of find out that it's been six months since pretty much the show has started. So at this point in time, so season one, episode 16, were six months since the premiere, like six months and change. And it was kind of nice. nice to have a little check and say, all right, that's where we are. And there are also really two interesting facts that we found out about Jane in this episode. First, he still talks to his wife as he revealed to, to the kid. So he still has these conversation with his now dead wife that in a way, it really breaks your heart, but it, in, you can't be surprised that Jane still has that vivid imagination of his working to try and sort of like create his own sense of therapy. In a way, I had hoped that they would have had more of maybe the wife throughout the episode. I mean, not like ghost, you know, kind of thing, but more of like a presence that's often there. I know it's cliche, a lot of shows do that, but sometimes it's okay to have like a couple episodes where you have that. Um, maybe they did, I'm not sure. See, I'm, I feel like they have, but I'm not 100% sure. And the other thing we found out was basically at the end when Jane was asking the killer how it felt, if it felt better to actually have committed the revenge and then the killer said, no, it doesn't really change anything. But at the same time, I felt that's not what Jane was looking for. <laughs> I feel like he was like, yeah, kind of feels good, you know, because if you remember when he actually gets to, you know, uh, confront and resolve the whole Red John storyline, uh, I think, I think he liked it. I think there was something in him that felt better, uh, undeniably so. But he, at this point in the series, he's still wondering whether it's the right thing to do. Let's move on to what didn't work. At the beginning of this episode, you had Jane trying to hypnotize this gangbanger who had killed two people and they were trying to basically nail him for that. And yeah, he was using hypnosis, which according to Lisbon is illegal, which by the way, it's not. It's just not, you can't use that in court, right? It's not illegal, it's unusable as is, if I'm not mistaken. And and Lisbon comes, look, you need to drop that. We have a red ball. And in this particular case, although that person had, was responsible for killing two people, that wasn't as important as this rich lady getting killed. And this kind of reminds me of this recurring thing that the mentalist had that was very annoying. So they always went to cases that, for all intents and purposes, surrounded rich white uh, you know, victims. It was never like, hey, let's go into this poor urban neighborhood that is, <clears throat> you know, not white and solve this maybe cold case or this problem that the local police has not been unable to solve. It's always, let's go either to wine country or let's go to some rich, you know, estate somewhere else. So that always bugged me. I, I always wondered like, guys, come on. You got 22 episodes. Can you just add some diversity in the victims from time to time? Not even talking about racial diversity, but sometimes just looking at victims that just don't have as much and don't happen to be white. <laughs> I mean, look, diversity, even in the victims. I know, I'm harping, but uh, it's important. It's important. So overall, this was what I would call an average episode with good moments. Uh, not the best, certainly not the worst. Um, if I had to give it a rating, I would give it a solid 6 out of 10. It, this, this is a 6 out of 10 for me. What rating would you give this episode? What, what are the things that stood out for you? Comment below and let me know. You know the rest of the spiel, like this video, give it a like button. If you're new, make sure to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, bye.